Jordan Maxwell is with us this first hour tonight. Jordan, of course, a man who has devoted over half a century of his life to serving all of us to try to help us understand what is behind the curtain. What is behind the curtain is really in front of the curtain. It's right in our faces. In point of fact, the men and women, if you can call them that, who are controlling the life and death, accent on the death of this planet, are no longer playing stealth games. They are just pushing it right down the sheep's throats. And the sheep continue to chew, swallow, and receive their, uh, what do you call it, Jordan, when you get that thing at the communion, that's right. Well, communion the, or shrill. The communion from hell. Anyway, they're very, they're very compliant, and uh, it just gets to be crazier and crazier all the time. Did you, in your wildest dreams, did you imagine we would be in the current <laughs> configuration we are now no, in 15 no, years? No, I always, I always thought that we as a country, of um, we as Americans would rise to the occasion and would, uh, you know, <clears throat> and would stand up and defeat uh, an yeah. enemy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and all of that would, would happen, no doubt about it, and that's why I wanted to help, uh, you know, with the ammunition. I wanted to help uh, to uncover all of the machinations and all the dark stuff of symbols and emblems and words and terms and and the secret societies and fraternal orders operating around the planet in relation to all of the political symbols and emblems that we have. <clears throat> and I just wanted to uh, make my uh, make it uh, available to my fellow uh, citizens and and to to give them something to think about and to uh, because ultimately I felt it, the country once it's uh, aware and alert to what's going on and how this thing is being played and I had to do everything with virtually nothing it's just me by myself <clears throat> and but I I just pictured that. One day it will catch on fire and people will rise up and see what's going on. Well, we and did it. Then, we did it in the Vietnam War. We yeah, did. Well, I know. You're right. But, uh, <clears throat> but I mean, they, they killed a hell of a lot of Americans and a lot of other folks, too. But the American public, in its last gasp of true expression of independence and freedom and God-given rights, stood up and forced the government to back down. It took years but they did it. Yep, you're right. And then came to uh, then came 9/11. <clears throat> and what I watched and witnessed with my own eyes on 9/11, uh right after 9/11, I just dropped out of uh, sight. I didn't do any more radio shows, I didn't do any lectures, nothing. I just dropped out uh and and figured it was over as far as I'm concerned. It was just totally uh, destructive to me. It was so obscene, so contrived, so obviously transparent, if not translucent, at least, yep. that, the, the, that you kind of said, my God, if this is going to go down the craw of America, America is dead. That's now, there was, there was, we had the Internet, excuse me for interrupting, yep. but you're, you're so right. We had the Internet, a lot of people raised hell with their keyboards, but that was about it. Yep. And, and I was just amazed at that how the general public, and there's just no doubt in my mind that the reason why the overwhelming majority of the people <clears throat> have accepted uh, this, this stuff that's being crammed down their throat. Bolshevism. <clears throat> yeah. Marxist that's, that's, Bolshevism. That's all it is. Pure, pure and simple. Soviet, Marxist, uh, Bolshevism, and the people have no idea because they don't they don't understand what that means. They have no wow. idea about how it works and what the words mean and and what the, uh, the, the, the the what the symbols mean and where these ideas have come from in the ancient world and how they were reproduced in the Soviet Union mm -hmm. <clears throat> in Russia to become the Soviet Union and what that meant. I knew, we knew that the, the, the Zionists were behind all of this, the Zionist financiers. They were really, they call themselves Jews, but they're not. Uh, they were behind the whole communist Bolshevism uh, movement, and they're behind what's happened here. This is all stemming back to 
Theodore Herzl, uh, whose plan really, uh, and prior to that, going back to uh, Benjamin Disraeli. This goes way back. Wait yeah, well, it even goes back before Benjamin. Well, yeah, course, it goes back to Benjamin Disraeli. I'm talking about uh, quasi-modern times, yeah. Another name you need to know in relation to this subject, which is very important, is a man named Moses Hess, H-E-S-S, mm. Moses Hess. Mm -hmm. Moses Hess was the man who actually came up with the idea of, of uh, what we call today communism, and he developed a concept that we today refer to as, as Soviet communism or as communism. It was Moses Hess who came up with that concept <clears throat> of collectivization of the, of the human race and also was the uh, man who was the leading uh, Zionist. Uh, and all of this is, uh, you know, is written history. Uh, and the book you really need to know about is called Fire in the Minds of Men by James Billington. James Billington is today the chief, library, chief librarian of the Library of Congress. And the chief librarian of the Library of Congress uh, has written a book himself, uh, two books on the subject. Uh, one's called uh, Icon and the Axe about the Soviet Union, about the communist uh, uh, pre-communist Russia called the, uh, the icon and the axe and then the second one which is very important today is called the uh, fire in the minds of men and in it he explains in detail how Zionism was set up uh, where it got its money who was in charge of it uh, who came up with the concepts the ideas uh, the communist uh, connection behind the scenes that no one should know anything about. And this is not some radical, <clears throat> it's the chief librarian from the Library of Congress, named James Billington. Huh. And it's a very thick, uh, incredibly interesting book. Every page is filled with all kinds of stuff you've never heard. Wow. And uh, just an incredible story. By the way, the National Security Agency collects enough information on all of us every six hours around the clock to fill the Library of Congress. That's how much data they're sucking in. You think you folks have privacy? <sighs> Interesting. Moses Hess, just checking, I haven't heard of that name in years, but uh, he was the man who really originated the concept of Zionism. So they, they hang the label of proto-Zionist on him. He died 1875. Of course, Herzl's was, work was really codified in the 1880s, early 1890s. Hess, uh, let me just read a little bit of this. It's very interesting, Jordan. Uh, mm -hmm. Hess originally advocated Jewish integration into the universalist socialist movement. See, he was always a socialist, always. Mm -hmm. And was a friend and collaborator, collaborator of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels has converted Engels to communism and introduced Karl Marx to social and economic issues, has played an important role in transforming Hegelian dialectical idealism, the theory of history, to the dialectical materialism of Marxism by conceiving of man as the initiator of history through his active consciousness. S was probably responsible for several Marxian slogans and ideas, including religion as the opiate of the people. So there you go. Just a quick idea. If you want to check into Mr. Hess, uh, by all means, Moses Hess, uh, the proto-Zionist, that's where it came from. Uh, it, it is always about, always has been about socialism. And his original uh, big push was ultimately to create a socialist Zionist Jewish state in Palestine. So it really, in a modern sense, originated with Hess, our, our problem today of the racist Zionist state of Israel. Very interesting. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot to be known about uh, Moses Hess and, and how this stuff developed you know, behind the scenes. But most people, even Jewish people that I know, have no idea about Moses Hess. None. They, um, don't have any idea in the world what's going on and how it's being played. 
And I have some dear friends who are Jewish, and they're telling me, well, there's nothing wrong with socialism. You know, it's better than uh, than uh, uh, <clears throat> the aristocracy owning everything. And and I and but I'm just amazed at how many people that feel that there's nothing wrong with socialism that don't know that socialist movements are financed by the capitalists. I mean, yeah. uh, all you've got to do is just go back into history and find out who who was it that financed, who sent the money uh, to Russia. Uh, you know, for the revolution to start with, and then who financed the uh, the rise of Russia to become the Soviet Union? It cost money to build armies and to uh, feed the military uh, and to set up a, a military industrial complex like the Soviet Union. Where did the money come from? But nobody ever thinks about that because socialism is simply one way of controlling the masses. And you give them the idea that everybody is going to be equal. Well, in point of fact, that's true. Everyone is equal. You're all slaves. Well so, said. <laughs> that's, you got to yeah, put it, that it, one down in writing. Jordan <laughs> Maxwell said another Maxwellism. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is created United equal. States You're all says, slaves. Uh, I love it. It was, by, it was quite a long time ago. I think it was Roosevelt or somebody <clears throat> who said... Uh, that, that half the world is is enslaved and the other half is free, and we just not and we can't live that way. And so, what did they do? They want to enslave the other half. Of course. And so, so when you see that uh, that the Marxist Leninist uh, communist philosophy is very simple, it's called socialism, which simply means get everyone together and on the one roof. And nobody has any rights, nobody has any protections, nobody has any right whatsoever to do anything. And uh, the masses love it because they think, uh, you know, we give them words like democracy. They have no idea where the word democracy comes from, have no concept of where, what democracy is. And all you have to do is go back and look at history and you'll see all of the communist nations have always been referred to as democracies, which means we have no freedoms whatsoever. Whatever the mob in the street wants, that's what we do. And that's easy enough to do, because with Hollywood and the <clears throat> propaganda sure. machine, oh, yeah. they can get the mob to vote on anything. Yep. And once the mob has decided what they want, then all of us have to go along with it, because after all, that is a democratic thing to do. And, ah, ah. You know, the so a, a real right dem- for it. 